in bed lies Melanie. The lights flicker on in her cell. Ready for school, she rises. Two soldiers enter, she greets them cheerfully. Their concern lies solely in fastening her to the wheelchair. They wheel her out into the hallway, lining her up among other children like herself. In a classroom, they position Melanie and the others according to numbers. Melanie asks Miss Justino, the teacher, to narrate a story suggesting a myth as a historical account. Reluctantly, the teacher complies and shares the tale of Pandora's box. Post-class, Melanie returns to her cell, met by the standoffish soldiers who refuse to bid her good night. Later, dinner arrives, a plate teeming with worms, she drifts off while eating. The following day, Dr. Caldwell pays her a visit. Melanie cracks a riddle the doctor posed, prompting a new one, a logic puzzle about Schrodinger's cat. Unable to respond, the doctor jots notes about her conduct, labeling her a subject. Finally, the doctor queries Melanie for a number, she responds with 13. Subsequently, the soldiers gather her and the other children for another day at school. While being wheeled past the numbered cells, Melanie notices that cell number 13 remains unopened. Arriving in the classroom, the same numbered spot remains vacant. The teacher assigns a writing task for the class, causing concern among the children about what story to craft. Melanie, however, diligently fills her notebook with a lengthy narrative. When the teacher seeks a volunteer to read aloud, Melanie eagerly raises her hand, portraying herself as the savior and hero in her story. The teacher, moved by the tale, approaches Melanie, wanting to touch her, but suddenly Sergeant Parks barges in, vehemently declaring that touching the children is prohibited. He aims to remind Justino why this rule stands and demonstrates by approaching a child and rolling up his sleeve, bringing his arm close. The child sniffs, jaws unhinging in an attempt to bite him. Subsequently, the other children mimic this behavior after class. Sergeant Park strolls into Melanie's cell while the others are readying to remove her restraints. Melanie taunts him, leading him to leave her strapped to the chair. Later that night, Justino discovers Melanie in that state and steps in to undo the restraints. The scent triggers Melanie's transformation, mirroring the other children. Before fully changing, she instructs the teacher to leave. Dr. Caldwell pays another visit that night, engaging in conversation and asking for another number. Melanie responds with four, matching her own cell number. The next morning, Sergeant Parks retrieves Melanie, escorting her out of the cell and into an elevator. Amidst gunshots and soldiers running, Melanie, bewildered, is wheeled to another part of the complex where Dr. Caldwell awaits in a laboratory. Dr. Caldwell quizzes Melanie about Schrodinger's cat, elaborating that the cat in the box exists both alive and dead, akin to Melanie's situation. When she doesn't receive the desired response, she explains the cat's concept further, likening it to Melanie's ambiguous state. A second doctor injects a sedative into her arm, swiftly knocking her out. They transfer her to a slab and restrain her, but she awakens rapidly. Justino rushes in to halt the doctor from dissecting Melanie. After a few convincing words, she persuades the teacher to lower her weapon, immediately deploying pepper spray, incapacitating her so the soldiers can apprehend her. Justino clarifies that she isn't merely dissecting Melanie, but using her as a source for a vaccine. Justino is taken away as an alarm blares. Caldwell instructs the other doctor to close the shutters, but a zombie breaks through the glass, biting her incessantly. Caldwell eliminates the zombies, injuring her own hand in the process. The other doctor begins to transform but manages to escape the lab just in time. Melanie remains alone in the lab with a zombie, yet it refrains from touching her. She seizes a scalpel, freeing herself from the restraints. Melanie steps outside to witness utter chaos in the complex. Zombies running amok, attacking soldiers who attempt to fend them off. Suddenly, she spots Justino being assaulted by the soldiers. Fuming, she charges at them, attacking and biting, ultimately killing them both before losing consciousness. Justina waits, discovers Melanie beside her, lifts her, and ushers her into a military vehicle as the zombies seize complete control of the complex. The vehicle exits, trailed by an injured figure. Sometime later, it halts in the middle of nowhere, and Parks and Kieran realize Melanie's presence in the back. Justina releases the girl, triggering Caldwell's protests that it's not her call. Melanie briefly runs from the vehicle, pausing to observe the outside world for the first time, while the others stay put, attempting futile radio contact with other outposts. Caldwell instructs them to retrieve her test subject. Parks, Kieran, and Caldwell search the vehicle for supplies but come up empty-handed, no water or food, just a mask used for handling zombies. The sergeant devises a plan to head south toward Beacon, presuming everyone at the complex, except the zombie children, to be deceased. They secure Melanie in the gunner's seat, strapped and masked, and head for a river for water. Upon arrival, a few zombies approach, triggering a shootout between the soldiers. In the scuffle, a soldier gets bitten. Parks pauses, watching for signs of the turn, then shoots him when the process commences, sealing the vehicle doors. His nerves heighten as he realizes Justino brought Melanie along. The girl inquires about the zombies, and Caldwell explains the infection, a fungus transmitted through biting. When Parks tries starting the vehicle, he discovers it's kaput, forcing them to trek on foot through London, a quicker yet riskier route. 
Parks and Kieran scout the perimeter, teeming with zombies, and convey to the others that they've got no choice but to navigate through the zombies to seek shelter and supplies once inside the city. The group cautiously traverses through a mass of slumbering zombies, being careful not to rouse them. Abruptly, Park halts as they hit a dead end. A zombie mother pushes a baby cart their way, prompting Caldwell to approach her, halting the cart. Upon checking, she discovers a rat inside, prompting a yelp that rouses the zombie mother and others. The group escapes, maneuvering through the zombie-infested city streets, eventually stumbling upon an abandoned hospital where they seek refuge. Parks discovers an entry to another floor, prompting them all to climb up for safety. Parks, Justino, and Kieran immediately set out on patrol while Caldwell and Melanie remain behind. Alone, Melanie inquires about her origin. Caldwell explains they were found in a hospital's maternity ward, children born to mothers infected with the fungus while pregnant. The infection entered their system via the placenta, making them distinct from other zombies, capable of thought and reaction, nearly like real people. Later, Justino returns, offering Melanie new clothes she scavenged and apologizing for not finding any food. That night, Park and Justino chat about Melanie, with Park sharing that the girl has strong feelings for her. Meanwhile, Kieran stands guard over Melanie, and they form a bond too. The next morning, they spot more zombies gathering in front of the hospital. Trapped, Melanie devises a plan. Since the zombies won't harm her, she convinces them to let her lure the zombies away from the building to create an escape route. Caldwell isn't keen on the idea, but lacking an alternative plan, the others agree. Before she heads out, Melanie requests to don her new clothes. Outside, she effortlessly passes through the zombies and unexpectedly spots a cat, hunts it down, and consumes it raw. Later, she enters a house and discovers a small dog. Returning, she uses the dog as a diversion to draw the zombies away from the hospital. Parks reinstates the mask and handcuffs, and they press on through the deserted city aiming for Beacon. En route, they spot an oddity, the fungus sprouting from the zombies' bodies. The doctor views this as the fungus's subsequent life cycle stage. She explains to Melanie that unlike others, the fungus behaves more as a mutual partner than a typical parasite. Venturing deeper into the city, they stumble upon a colossal mass of bodies merging into an enormous fungus. Caldwell suspects this mass is the reason behind the absence of walking zombies. When these beings conglomerate, they transition into the mature stage of the fungus, capable of spreading across larger areas, possibly the entire world. Amid their journey, they chance upon a mobile laboratory. While inside, they attempt to start the engine and reach out on the radio, but receive no response. Karen departs for a supply run leaving Melanie feeling uneasy, hinting at a potential transformation. She expresses the need to feed, and they release her to hunt. After swiftly finding her meal, she devours it voraciously. Upon finishing, she detects an unfamiliar noise, leading her to a bookstore. Peeking inside, she observes a group of children communicating through grunts. Melanie grasps that these kids are similar to her when suddenly, one detects a scent and leads the rest outside to the mobile lab. Caldwell, growing increasingly ill, discloses to Justina about her sepsis. She then revisits the topic of Melanie emphasizing the need for her brain and spine to concoct the vaccine, a notion Justina strongly opposes. Amidst this, Melanie returns and shares about the children she spotted. Convinced they'll hunt Kieran, they find him wandering down a street, stumbling upon an open cans, eventually reaching a store and sneaking inside. Once in, he indulges in food and sifts through grimy magazines. Unexpectedly, a young girl startles Kieran, guiding him to the store's rafters, where more children suddenly appear. Their leader emerges, and they launch a collective assault on Kieran. Meanwhile, Melanie guides Parks and Justina toward him, using her sense of smell akin to the other children. Finally reaching the store, they enter to discover Kieran, partially devoured. Melanie realizes the children didn't only set a trap for him but for their group too. Confirming her suspicion outside, the kids await their arrival. Melanie confronts and battles their leader, proving her strength to shield Parks and Justino, leading them to safety. Returning to the lab, they find the door open. Upon entering, Caldwell sedates them with gas, aiming to proceed with her plan on Melanie. However, halted by intense pain from her hand, she briefly turns away to tend to it. When she faces Melanie again, the girl is awake and alert. They converse, Caldwell urging Melanie to surrender for the greater good with her vaccine. Almost agreeing, Melanie questions if Caldwell sees her as truly alive or merely mimicking human behavior. Caldwell confirms the former, prompting Melanie's poignant question, why should we perish to save you? Melanie bolts from the lab, followed by Caldwell, lacking weapons or protection. Caldwell is swiftly surrounded by the zombie children. Meanwhile, the girl heads to the massive fungus they'd encountered earlier, intending to set it ablaze to activate the spores. Unfortunately, Parks follows her and gets infected. Melanie didn't foresee this turn of events, and as he begins to transform, he pleads for her to end him before he joins their ranks. Justino awakens in the lab, shielded from the spores, realizing the situation with Melanie as he waits outside. In the film's closing scenes, Justina is roused by Melanie after a considerable period. Armed with a whiteboard, she initiates a class, teaching the zombie children, who listen from the other side of the lab window. 
Melanie now leads them, and they all participate in Miss Justino's lessons together. 